the politics where the Democrats set to take control of the House come January. So the question is, what does that mean for Massachusetts? John Keller's guest today is Democrat Congressman Joe Kennedy. It's time now for Keller at Large. Well, good morning and thanks very much for joining us. Happy belated Thanksgiving to one and all. As recently as earlier this year, my guest this morning was a staunch foe of marijuana legalization. But as he writes in an article for the online newsletter STAT, quote, given the rapid pace of state level legalization and liberalization, I believe we must implement strong, clear and fair federal guidelines, end quote. Uh, that is my guest this morning, Representative Joe Kennedy of the 4th Congressional District. Congressman, welcome. John, good morning. Good to have you here. Thank you. So, why'd you change your mind? So, a uh, couple of reasons. One is the status quo just ain't working, right? It, it's not working for folks that uh, have criminal records because of marijuana arrests. It's not working for folks that believe that marijuana can actually help them with a medical condition. It's not working for states that have, like Massachusetts, now gone through this legalization process and yet still there's are cut off from some aspects of the banking system to federal regulation around and guidance around dosage packaging advertising to kids that's just all of those issues that there's tension with the federal regulatory framework Two. States are, are moving forward on this, and they're not rolling it back. You're seeing this in progressive states. You're seeing it in conservative states. You're seeing it from conservative legislators as well. And so, look, am I ever going to love the legalization and the broadening of marijuana policy? No, candidly, I'm not. But this comes down to the fact that states aren't turning back, and that status quo is not working. And if that's the case, I think it is time for the federal government to say, hey, let's try to make sure we put the proper safeguards and consumer protections in place that just at the moment the federal government is, is absent on. Well, there's a bipartisan bill that's been filed in the Senate by Senator Warren and I believe Cory Gardner of, of Colorado. Uh, it, and I, I believe they touch on a lot of the things you just mentioned. Is that what you're pushing for also? So I, I'm familiar with that Senate bill. Yep. Um, they touch on some, but they actually don't touch on a fair amount. What it does is push a lot of this to the states and say, hey, states, go ahead and do it. Um, I think there needs to be clear federal guidelines and policy around some of these issues, particularly when it comes to advertising, warning labels, dosage, advertising to kids, uh, the, the federal government saying that this is solely up to the responsibility of states, I don't actually think is appropriate. There's, there are less federal protections at the moment around marijuana than there are around alcohol or tobacco. And I think that if we are going to say that this, is, this should be legalized, that the federal government could, should come in and, and set those guidelines. And that's kind of more towards the framework that I'm looking for. There's another issue in the news here that I wanted to ask you about before we get into some more local concerns, which is uh, uh, the situation with Saudi Arabia and the murder of uh, the uh, Washington Post journalist. Uh, and now, most recently, the president's statement basically siding with the Saudis and saying this is not, we're not really going to do anything. Uh, other uh, European countries have already imposed, I believe Germany imposed uh, uh, much more severe sanctions than we've contemplated. What's your reaction to all of this? The idea that the President of the United States is going to ignore the assessment put forth by our intelligence agencies and uh, cast his own lot with the words uttered by uh, uh, the crown prince and uh, the, the Saudi uh, royal family is bizarre. Um, it's disappointing. And the United States, our words should be worth more than that. I, I follow suit with bipartisan legislature, Democrat and Republican, House and Senate, that have called for a much more robust response from the United States government. The, look, John, the idea that we would somehow turn the other way when an individual living in the United States is murdered going in to get information to be able to get married abroad is stunning. And we, you shouldn't be able to buy us off just because you've got a business deal. But doesn't the president have a point? This is a key geopolitical ally of ours. Lots of times our allies do stuff we don't like and we don't uh, come down on them like a ton of bricks. A geopolitical ally of ours was going to murder an American, uh, that was a, an individual that was a critic that was living in the United States. Then one would like to think we would do something about it and not just turn the other cheek because they happen to have a, a couple of business deals with us. The United United States, our word, should be worth a lot more than that. And no doubt in your mind, briefly here, that the crown prince is implicated. There, there is no way, and I don't think anybody actually doubts this, that such an operation could take place in a Saudi consulate with Saudi personnel 
on Saudi planes without the, the approval of the highest levels of the Saudi regime. I, I don't know how that could possibly take place, and no one else has an answer, offered a compelling answer either. All right. On that note, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Nancy Pelosi's future as a potential House Speaker in Washington and how that might affect us here in Massachusetts. We'll continue with Congressman Joe Kennedy in a moment. Stay with us.